How's it going, everybody? Uh, I just wanted to do a video on uh, AR-15s, uh, mostly on uh, you know direct impingement ARs versus uh, uh, gas piston operated ARs. Uh, the AR-15 pistol here that I have here and this uh, 20 inch AR and a back are both uh, direct impingement. Uh, this one used to be, uh, this one is now running the Adams Arms piston conversion. Uh, basically I'm just going to do this video just on my personal feelings on the subject, what I think is better, uh, or just basically some uh, pros and cons to each, and uh, basically kind of show you, uh, or tell you what I think about each, uh, basically is what this is going to be about. Uh, in case if you're somebody that's uh, uh, maybe building an AR, which is kind of hard to do right now with all this uh, gun craze uh, in this threat against the assault rifle ban. Uh, so parts are a little hard to find right now and uh, you know of course prices that I, I may say uh, may change because of uh, demand and stuff. Uh, but anyways uh, basically the direct impingement system if you don't know is uh, the standard and was the standard uh, uh, gas system or operation for ARs or M16s and M4 uh, military variants. Uh, it's basically your gas tube that runs through. The round goes down the barrel, goes up the gas tube, uh, not the round of course, but the hot gases, goes through the tube into all the major components in your receivers, uh, your upper and lower, and goes through this gas key here. All the hot gases go in there and basically all go inside here, uh, fouling up uh, everything in there. Uh, again, you may not see problems with this uh, in just a short amount of rounds, but maybe if you're putting 1,000 plus rounds and you don't clean it, and maybe you're shooting really dirty steel case ammo and don't lubricate it, you may see some issues with the, uh, with the, the gun. Uh, a negative maybe uh, with direct impingement also, besides basically what everybody says, it, uh, the gun craps where it eats basically, uh, is that over time, this will this will get very very hot when you're firing uh, or shooting the gun and over time it may not happen ever but over time there's cases where this bolt carrier actually cracked uh, because this is getting really really hot uh, and it cools down and just over time just the stresses uh, it can crack uh, so there are, are some negatives about direct impingement uh, and then there's some pros you know for the most part uh, for one, it's very simple uh, operation. There's like nothing to it, basically. Uh, but uh, anyways, with the piston, it's basically the same, op same basic thing. The round goes down the barrel, up the gas block. But instead of going down the gas tube and following up the action in the receiver, it's basically following up here. Uh, so again, some people say, well, all you're doing is just moving all the stuff from here to up here. Uh, you know, how's that doing anything? Well, it is, because this is a major uh, portion, and again, you're not getting this bulk carrier group all dirty and fouled up, and your firing pin and everything. The only thing that really gets dirty is your bolt head. Uh, so basically, you're moving it out of a crucial area and keeping all this coal and moving it up here out of the way in a less, uh, basically, or a place where, you know, there's not much uh, going on. Uh, and basically this can get dirty and it's not like you have a dirty uh, bolt carrier group and also the hot gases from a direct impingement over time could basically take away the oil from the heat uh, maybe evaporate it maybe and uh, basically uh, this operation won't stay lubed as long as the piston operation so that's a pro, pro again with the uh, gas piston and it's a little different on a gas piston. It has basically this uh, strike face here where when the gases push, basically instead of going through a tube, it pushes the piston uh, in the operation. And basically that piston comes back and hits that and pushes the bolt carrier back. And again, the spring in the buffer tube you know, makes it go forward again. Uh, there has been cases in the past, but I think Adam's arms corrected this uh, where they called it carrier tilt where when it would smack the uh, strike face uh, basically a carrier t 
uh, the carrier will kind of like tilt and kind of grind or uh, kind of mess up the, uh, the buffer tube here on the inside and uh, basically you can see where there would be like metal shavings. Me, I haven't had that uh, issue. Again, I think they uh, corrected that uh, on newer models. Uh, and I think even if you have an older model, you can send that in and I think they'll uh, replace it for you. Don't quote me on that, but I'm sure they will. Uh, they basically put the uh, raised metal portions right here. Uh, I believe that's what they did to fix it, uh, to keep it uh, from kind of going down a little bit. So it keeps it a little more stable. So it comes straight back instead of kind of like coming down and grinding. Uh, again, I'm not exactly sure uh, how it moved to uh, cause the issue. I don't know if, I don't know exactly. <laughs> but anyways, uh, so again, there are pros and cons. Some people say direct impingement is more accurate, which can be, you know, true. Because uh, there's not what they say a violent action with the piston. Uh, you know, I got this metal rod coming back and forth. Uh, it causes a little more felt recoil. Uh, again, especially how heavy this rifle is, I don't think you'd have that issue. Uh, and also, I mean, if you're doing rapid fire, uh, rap or if you're rapid firing, anyways, I don't care what you say with both gun or uh, designs. Uh, piston or uh, direct impingement, you're going to lose accuracy anyways. Uh, and if you're bench resting, in my opinion, uh, even if you have a piston, I don't think you're losing accuracy right off the bat. I think accuracy fails more when you're shooting another round not too far after that first shot. So if you're trying to do accuracy type of shooting, uh, you're going to be taking your time anyways and the gun's going to settle down a little bit. Uh, so basically I don't think you're really going to lose much for accuracy. Uh, don't quote me on that, but uh, that's just my feeling. So really, the accuracy part is kind of iffy. Uh, I don't know if that's really a fair statement as far as bashing the piston. Uh, and again, in most cases, most guys aren't trying to be the most accurate. They're just trying to do maybe tactical type shooting or just plinking around, so really accuracy is not a big deal. And I don't think it's not like it's going to be a huge group size difference. I mean, I'm sure it's probably going to be very minimal. Uh, if you are going to build one from the, the ground up, scratch, I mean, not buying a complete upper, I mean, you're buying an upper separate, barrel separate, everything, I think it would just be wise right off the bat just to go piston. Uh, for the cost of how much a bolt carrier is, uh, they're, you know, pretty pricey, and just with a little more money, you can actually get the piston, it would be more reliable, and have uh, the bolt carrier group, and a gas block, and everything else, and if you buy everything separate, um, with direct impingement, you'd still have to buy the bolt carrier group. You'll still have to buy some sort of a gas block, either it being a traditional post or a bolt-on type of gas block. Uh, so, in my opinion, you know these can be you know 60 bucks on average, uh, and a bolt carrier group can be about 150 plus. Uh, probably depends on the brand, the quality, and everything. And the way things are now, it's probably going to be even more. So in my opinion, you might as well spend, you know, this Adam's Arms is like about like 300 bucks for the whole conversion. So you might as well spend that extra 100 bucks or so and uh, and get a much, much more reliable firearm. Uh, and then the other nice thing is if you're going to run some sort of optic, uh, you can have a, basically a, a low profile. Uh, if you want sights, you know, since the Adam's Arm has the rail, you can put flip up sights on there and uh, you won't have this big old post sticking in the way like on a traditional like A, A2 or A1 uh, or traditional post uh, so it keeps everything nice and uh, kind of low profile uh, so again it all depends on how you're going to set up your rifle uh, some of the criticism that uh, or not criticism I'm sorry but uh, some of the things that uh, they say is that Adams are, or the, the piston in general is going to be more reliable in the AR uh, that is very true in my in my experience. Uh, again, like I said, you're keeping all the hot stuff out of the, the major portion. Uh, but again, that doesn't mean it's fail proof. Uh, can still the rifle can still fail uh, if you don't have enough oil, which they say you can run it in the uh, you know basically pretty much dry with piston, which is true. But you still may want a little oil. And the major thing is in the chamber. 
So even though it, you can run it pretty much dry and dirty, uh, you still need to make sure your chambers and your maybe even your bolt head uh, clean and dry or uh, lubricated, because uh, that happened to me a couple times. We were running steel case, we were a uh, very dry chamber, you know, I had lots of rounds through it, didn't clean it, it was just dirty steel case. Uh, and I had two stuck uh, steel case rounds. Uh, even though, yes, this is piston, it still I acted up. Uh, but in most cases, uh, this will be a much more reliable design and direct impingement for the most part. Uh, it's just, you know, something to think about. You still need to oil it a little bit in mostly the, the chamber area. Uh, other than that, it's still much more reliable. Uh, most conditions and everything. Uh, you know, again, if you're uh, going to be dunking it in water or something uh, with a gas tube, you can get uh, water in a gas tube that can rupture, blow up, guns useless, can damage the gun very uh, severely, or yourself. Uh, with this operation, you don't have to worry about it. It's going to be more uh, safe. Uh, again, for most civilians, they're not going to be dunking or swimming in water or something, coming out and shooting. But uh, it's just something to think about. Uh, Another pro with uh, piston operation is if you're going to be running some sort of uh, or pistol uh, AR, something with a real short barrel length or some sort of a uh, or Air 15 short barrel rifle. Uh, one thing to consider is with the shorter barrels, the shorter you go, the less reliable it's going to be. Uh, more finicky it's going to be. The more gases are going to be uh, coming back into the action if you're running direct impingement like this one is. Uh, so it gets dirty a lot faster because it's not having time to burn up all the uh, gases uh, when you're firing a gun. So a piston is going to be much more reliable and more uh, suitable for like shorter barreled uh, ARs. Uh, another benefit with piston is uh, if you're running like a suppressor, which this is not a real suppressor, just a fake one. Uh, but if you had a permit for a real suppressor and you're running it, uh, suppressors really dirty up the action and the, the gun a lot uh, too. And uh, with this particular one, you can rotate it and turn uh, the setting to run a suppressor. Uh, and with this, it keeps the gun a lot more cleaner with the piston than if you had a uh, direct impingement with a suppressor. Uh, so this is a couple benefits of the uh, piston too. Uh, so it depends on you know what you're going to do. Again, if you're doing some sort of pistol, piston is going to be much better, um, more reliable, and uh, going to stay cleaner a lot you know, with the uh, shorter barrel length and everything. Uh, so I mean there's really some pros and cons of both designs. In my opinion I think the piston has more pros than direct impingement. Uh, you know, that's just my experience. I mean I've been happy with both the systems uh, minus this one because I'm still trying to get this one kind of worked out a little bit as far as being reliable. Uh, of course haven't been able to shoot it or any of them in a long time because of you know with the ammo th uh, you know crazy everybody's buying ammo and stuff uh, but if I had to choose if you had the extra cash again like I said go with piston uh, it's just so much better in my opinion again in most cases uh, you know I'd, I really feel if you're if you're running direct impingement like on this especially with the longer barrel uh, like a 20 inch or longer uh, Reliability is going to be excellent or very, very good with uh, uh, direct impingement just because the longer barrel is going to have more time to burn up all the gases and it's going to uh, foul up less. It's going to take more rounds uh, since more of the gases are getting burned up. Uh, so, again, that's kind of why you know you see with the shorter barrels, they uh, usually decrease in uh, reliability. But again, most people, for what they're doing, if they're, you're not going out shooting a thousand rounds in a day or something, uh, you're, you'll, you should have no problems. Just a little maintenance, you can clean it up a little bit, make sure it's a little oiled, and you shouldn't have any problems at all. Uh, if you're doing some sort of tactical courses, uh, maybe you live somewhere in a desert area or something like that, uh, or you're going to be running around in the dirt and the mud uh, doing tactical courses, uh, you may want to consider a piston, uh, especially if you're going to be putting a lot of rounds down range in this, in this course uh, in a day or maybe you're doing a, a week, weekend type course uh, somewhere. Uh, I think piston is going to be a, a better option for you maybe. Uh, 
So that's something maybe to consider. But again, for your average plinker, just going out to the range for you know a few hours and coming back home, uh, you know this direct impingement really might be the way to go. Again, maybe in a shit hit the fan situation, uh, maybe you may want to go with this option. It'd be less maintenance on uh, for on your part that you have to do. Uh, again, uh, just some things to consider. Uh, whatever operation you go, I think you'll be happy with uh, with the firearm. Uh, again, just some things I figured out, uh, kind of mentioned, which a lot of it people probably mentioned a lot already. Uh, but just figure out, just give my two cents on the uh, subject and uh, how I feel about you know each operation. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and feel free to uh, leave me a message. Try to get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, and thanks for watching. Have a good one.